Welcome back to Six Ashes for episode 8 with me, Mr Silly P. Quarter past six in the evening. I find myself with a very strange predicament. Um, thank you to everyone who commented on the local message boards. Um, I bailed everything. <laughs> and I'm not joking when I say that. I went along, I cut verges, I cut everyone's garden that would let me. Um, and I'll be honest, we did very well out of it. Um, but it would appear, and I don't know why, the local council have decided to limit me to how many silage bales I can make and leave lying around the countryside, apparently. Um, so as you can see, there's one there. Um, there's some in the garden there. There's some in the driveway of the house there and the next one along. Um, there are some along the verges here and there. Uh, I did all of their garden for them. They're very happy with that. Um, I did the garden here their little field next to it. Um, I did this house with their garden as well and it's telling me I'm not allowed to make any more. Now again go with it most local councils will allow you to do 200 created bales. Now I'm not going mad that sun is showing 80. I'm really confused now um, and a little bit miffed if I'm honest. Now Th like I say, thank you to everyone. Apparently, the local um, markets will take silage bales, even if they're not fermented, because they will be. So I have been reliably informed by plenty of people that they will take them, um, because th they can store them and they will ferment. This field here on the right has just come up with a contract for baling. So I've taken that contract. The other thing I was reliably informed was if you create bales as part of a contract, any that are spare don't show up on your created bales list. So you can kind of get around it that way as well. So what I'm thinking is if the, um, the contract for this field here, 66, was requiring me to take silage bales to the livestock market, what I might do is get over here and start mowing but I might deliver my silage bales because they're on my count, my permissible amount, deliver those to the livestock market to fulfil the contract. So rather than like loose silage or anything like that, I can use mine already and then any bales that I get from the contract I can then keep and store. There, there is a logic to that I think and I hope it's going to work although time is running away with me I have borrowed equipment the contract pays 34 grand I think it is 34,935 and it only was asking for 1,600 and something I think it was to borrow their equipment there's a few fertilizing jobs a really nice lucrative one on field 9 there's another bailing job on where is it field 18 which was the one I initially thought I would go for um, so I'm going to do that. What I'll probably do is start mowing. Oh, now, will it let me use that to pick up my bales? Ah, oh, it's square. It's a baler and baler wrapper. I didn't even look at that. So it's going to be square bales. Well, that's not a problem. It doesn't matter. They're still wrapped bales, aren't they? So what I'll need to do is borrow... Borrow? Lease um, a bale loader and start taking my round bales... Yeah, anyway, that's that's what I'm going to be doing. That's my plan. Um, so we'll jump in the Deutz file that it's given us. Nine. Very nice indeed. Nice hefty bit of kit. Now, question is... Will this? It should. Because I'm not doing... Um, not doing hay. So what I'll do is hook that to that. And I'll hook the windrow up behind it, so I'll mow and windrow. That windrow is quite wide, but we'll take them up to the field together anyway. And then we'll bail. Beacons on. Let's get it done. So, I'm not going to put you through the agony of having to watch me do more bailing, because I've done it already. And um, But I'll just to let you know, this is what I'm planning to do. What I'll probably do is cut in a minute to... I'll, I'll take some of my round bales and drop them off 
and if it accepts them as part of the contract, it's livestock market. I've got to take them to, isn't it? Livestock barn. Yeah. Um, no, not that one. That one. Still livestock barn. Anyway. Um, then it should go up. There'll be progress on the bar. How many I'm going to have to deliver, I don't know. But I will be replacing what I deliver with what I get off of field 66. So yeah, I think it's a win-win, and it should be okay with my bail count. I'm seriously puzzled by that and why it's not showing. And I'm also concerned that it will tell me I can't make any more bales until I've sold some. But I th I'm pretty sure when you do contract bales, it doesn't it doesn't count towards your bail limit because technically, I don't know, it comes under a different dimension or something like that. It's Oh dear. Quantum physics and that kind of thing. <laughs> Something along those lines, anyway. Swing out wide. Can I get round with all this on? Oh, yeah, that's alright. Without crashing into any hedges. Nice. Indicator off. Where's the gate? We are early summer, so we should have a lighter evening, but we'll see how we go. Um, right, I will see you in a little while, once I've got some bales done, and we'll see what happens contract-wise. Of course, the gate's going to be right at the very corner, isn't it? Or I've already driven past it. Nope, right there. It would be, wouldn't it? Should pay out very nicely. Absolute results. Slightly, yeah, we'll just come back for that. I think <laughs> that's what I'll do. Row afterwards, I think. So, mowing is continuing. I have um, leased a bale trailer because it's bigger than the one I've got. The one I've got, I wouldn't get many bales on at all. So, this is the moment of truth for me. I mean, I know a lot of people have done this already, but these bales are the ones I made in the previous episode. They're not fully fermented, so I'm using my bales to fulfill the contract. In theory, it's taken them. And it's come up 26% transport for field 66. So it's taken my bales, not fully fermented, towards the contract. So what I will do is go and get some more of my bales, deliver them to fulfill the contract. I won't do too many because I don't want to deliver more than I need to. Then the bales I create on the contract, I will keep for me. So thank again, thank you to everyone who commented to say you can... I think it's because I did it on Sussex Farms and there was a problem with delivering bells anyway. That could be why, but... And so, sometime later, it's time to wrap the bells. Um, the only downside is that because it's a contract, and as I said, when you do the contract stuff, it doesn't come up on the bail counter as created bales. So I don't actually know how many bales I've made. I won't know until I start collecting them with the trailer and they've supplied me with the um, Arcusin Auto Stack which will do stacks of 16. So uh, yeah I won't know. 
I've taken two loads of 18 bales of my own so far, 36. I think I'm going to have to do at least another load. Um, and then what we'll do is once these are all wrapped, we'll see where we stand contract-wise. Or I will see where we stand contract-wise. Um, to see whether I need to deliver any more of my own. We, we should normally, on a contract like this, the amount of bales you need to deliver to fulfil the contract will leave you with some spare. So we should have some left over. So the point behind this being, we will end up with more silage bales than we started off with. Without, I say, without having to do any work. Without to do all this work, we've been, you know what I mean. We'll end up with more bales anyway. That's the plan. So I'm going to probably see you in the morning now. We're losing light. Um, by the time I'm done, it's going to be dark. So I'll see you in the morning and we'll have some results hopefully funny story <laughs> it's six o'clock in the morning uh, we are on day two still early summer the sun is due to come out at some point now again another massive thank you to the farming community locally um, the, the grass situation when I ran the farm on Sussex farms I could never get the fertilising state to go above a certain amount. When you cut the grass, it's on one fertilising state. I would put whatever I needed to put down on it and it would give me the second. The grass would then start to grow and it wouldn't allow me to put a third one down. So, loads of people said to me, solid fertiliser, manure, that's what you want to put down. Not solid fertiliser, solid manure is what you want to put down. Um, I had already fertilised both of my grass fields. So I'd gone from one growth state, uh, fertilising state, to a second. And people had said, oh, whatever you do, put down solid manure, either before or after you fertilise with the other type, um, and you will get the ones you need. Or just wait until the next growth stage. The problem is, every time I've done it, when I've waited for the next growth stage, it then hasn't allowed me to for some reason. Um, so, in the middle of the night, <laughs> sneaking around, um, I lease the menu spreader and I muck spread both my fields. So if we go across to the map, you will now see that field 65 and field 28 have both got full fertilising states on. So first fertilising state from when I cut the grass, second fertilising state I did normal fertiliser um, and then I came over again with a solid manure and it gave me the third. Um, and the grass hasn't even really started to grow again. So that's absolutely fantastic. Now, the funny story part. Um, <laughs> when I said earlier on, before I started doing the um, baling contract, that the local council wouldn't let me make more than a certain amount of bales, and 80 was what it would allow, had allowed me to make, when I then went to make the bales for the contract over on field 66 over there, it kept on coming up with the error message saying I needed to sell some bales first. <laughs> I just could not for the life of me work out why. What had transpired was, before I moved to the area, the local farmers had placed some bales in various different barns, just in case I wanted to come along and buy some at a later date, if you catch my drift. Now those bales were all purchased bales, however, what I think is as soon as I decided to go seasonal and put seasons on, the council, <laughs> I know it sounds very convoluted, decided that they were created bales and not purchased bales. I had 40 round bales in a barn over in that direction, I had 40 hay bales in a barn, oh, giving it away, over in that direction, and I had 40 straw bales, if you recall, in this barn. So the local council had decided, that's 120 bales that you've made. I hadn't, I'd bought them. But for some reason it had tripped it out, which meant, that's 120 bales, it would only allow me to make 80. That's why I'd hit my 80 limit, and that's why I couldn't make any more. So what I had to do was speak to the locals, and they've all gone. All of those bales had to go. Which meant I could then carry on doing my baling contract. Fantastic. Now, the results of the baling contract. I had 80 bales of my own. To fulfil the contract, it took 65 of those, which means I have got 15 
of my bales that I made left. They are there. I think there's a gap at the back there. Yeah. 15 of my own, which I bought over and they have now been stored in there. That baling contract over there, I got 98 bales. If you take the 98, take the 65 off, we got 33 extra bales. So we've actually worked out with the 15 there, we are 33 up on where we were before, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, obviously they're square and they are in the stacks of 16 because I had the, the Arcusin auto stack as part of that contract. So we are up by 33 silage bales and they should be fermenting. There we go. 40 hours to go. Um, at the moment they're grass but they will become silage. For me to either, and I think what I might do again, there's another bailing contract available which pays out 15 grand. I might do the same thing again. Um, I might use these bales here to fulfill the contract and then what I you know, have got left over and so I will then increase my silage bale situation again. My creative bales is still saying 80. Um, so according to that, I've only created 80 bales. Of those 80 bales that I originally created, I've only got 15 of them left. I don't know how this is going to go. I don't know whether I'm going to start to make other bales. I'm going to get the warning come up again. Like I said, I have been reliably informed that bales created as part of a contract don't go on your creative bales list. I know that purchase bales don't. But then that said, I had that issue that when I went seasonal, the map decided, no, actually, you know, you've, you've made those, not bought them. So we could still hit a 200 barrel limit. I'm trying everything in my power to avoid it. But you never know. So... I did take on, yesterday, a fertilising contract on Field 9, which I'm about to go and do now. Um, I have restocked my fertiliser. We are up to 120 grand, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, I am keeping my eye out for more land to buy. I'm also on the lookout for a lorry. I want to get a lorry. Um, I, had, I, I did say there was a local company that had a coal lorry available with a little flatbed. Um, I've heard tell of um, a local that has got a lorry and trailer for sale. So, yeah, who knows what we're going to end up with. But I don't know. I mean, I have got enough money to buy them, I think. But I don't know, in all honesty, if it's something I need just yet. Maybe when we get to harvesting time, it might be something worth investing in. So I'm thinking for the time being... I do actually need some land. I need some land other than my little plot. Where I've got my stuff. Where are we? Uh, here. I want to get a plot. A plot to call my own. Oh, that's a bit expensive, isn't it? Nothing too expensive. <laughs> I know. I'm being tight. Although. Hmm. The fisheries will pay me a bit of money. Plus there's a little campground, there's a bit of space there. How are we looking for these? Oh, that's a massive plot. That one's 200 and something. Yeah, I need to I need to have a look around. 58, that's not bad. Field 36. I, I need to kind of increase my portfolio. I'm still seriously considering getting the farm. 125 grand, plus we get the field. Paula and Gordon are definitely, they want to sell. Maybe if I do a few more contracts, I might buy the pig farm. Gives me a more sort of solid home base. Oh, wait, what have I done here? Open my door. Um, yeah, it'll give me a more solid home base. And uh, a field, and then the potential looking forward to getting some pigs. Um, although I have encountered another problem. It's my own fault, it's all my own doing. I can't blame anybody else, it's all me. Um, because of the way I set this all up, if you recall from my setting up video, um, I used the map that I had used for doing the map tour. And I had all the animals on it and I'd put feed in all the troughs and stuff to see where manure came and all that kind of stuff. 
um, and pallets and those kind of things. And I, rather than starting a completely fresh map, I thought oh, it would be much easier if I just do that and delete the animals, which I did. Problem is, with doing that, the troughs, all of the farms have all got feed in. So when I do come to buying the pig farm, there's already a load of feed there. And there is the sheep farm, the cow farm, all of them. Which isn't too much of a problem. I've got a kind of, you know... I suppose at the end of the day, if there's a person that's running a pig farm, and they've all the feeds and the troughs and that kind of stuff, and they decide, you know what, we're going to set up or we're going to move, we're going to take our pigs, maybe they'll be nice and leave the feed for me. Um, rather than taking it with them. I'm just hoping. Did I open the case on? So that's field... I think that's field 9, isn't it? I'm pretty sure it's field 9. Just two. Yep. <laughs> it is next to me. So I'm going to fertilise this one. Uh, like I said, there are a load of fertilising contracts available, so what I might do now is spend a bit of time whizzing through some fertilising contracts, and then the next time you see me will be a little bit richer, a little bit better off, and maybe we'll by the farm. Now I also understand that there's that kind of feeling that well it's all happened a bit too quick but again as I've mentioned before with seasons on but also in the game generally you've got to remember this is a this is a microcosm of real life. Um, in, even if you're running at times one what you can get done in a day represents what you would probably do over a period of a week you know on a normal farm so you have to kind of allow for that in, in your in your head in your calculations you know running six day seasons um, as I am as we've already said each day is worth 15 days so if I go through this day doing a load of fertilizing jobs and then say okay I'm going to buy the, the farm whilst as far as episodes go that seems really quick realistically that's been another two weeks has gone by or another, you know, maybe a month if it takes me a couple of days to build up the money. Um, which I know is still very quick to be able to build up enough money to buy a house or farm or whatever, but that's the way it's all set up, isn't it, you know? I don't know, I'm just I'm just trying to justify because I know I shouldn't justify it. I shouldn't have to. Anyway, you don't want to see me fertilising again. I will see you later on, hopefully again a little bit more uh, wealthy. I might pick up that other baling contract, which means we could have a little bit more money and some more bales on hand, potentially. Um, but it could well be midsummer next time you see me. Maybe. Mm. I am finding, though, that doing this... Um, bizarrely, I thought it would be a lot better, say so better, easier. It's actually just as time-consuming as doing Stone Valley with massive fields that take a long time um, because of the time frame and because I'm trying to kind of skip ahead days but within those days I do still want to get jobs done I don't want to skip three days and not do any jobs because that's how I'm earning my money um, but doing those jobs in between is taking time as you can imagine so the, um, the episodes on here have been a little bit few and far between. If you follow my channel, if you've been watching my mod reviews, if you watch Stone Valley, you'll know why. You'll know the reasons why things have been a little bit hit and miss the last week or so. Um, I'm, I'm trying desperately to get back on track, back on schedule. So. I shall endeavour to persevere.
It's day three. It's midsummer. A month has passed, not since I last saw you, but we've gone through day one and two, early summer. We're now midsummer. Contracts have been good to me. Seasonal work is beating me up a little bit, I'll be honest. It comes in... You either get a, an absolute mass of jobs and you don't know which one to do first, or an absolute glut of jobs and there's just you don't know what to do. There's a couple of cultivating jobs available, there's a couple of fertilising jobs available. Um, I did take on the, uh, the bailing contract, the money has gone up considerably. The reason behind that is, if we look on the map, and I've got that set for the soil composition for fertilising, you can see the fertilising jobs I've been doing. Now, seasonal work, depending on where you are, can be very, very different. If you're in a farming area, in a farming community where not as many farms want or need your help, if there aren't as many fields available to do for, uh, work on, you can run out of fertilising jobs and cultivating jobs and stuff very, very quickly. So you'll run through all the jobs that are available and then there's nothing left. What's great about this area is there are loads and loads and loads of fields and farms and farmers who want work doing. Um, as you can see, some of the fields I've done were already up to fully fertilised. Um, some are on two stages and some are on one, which means more fertilising jobs will probably pop up. We're going to be heading towards harvesting time fairly soon. Um, we're going to whiz up and have a look at the bale situation in a moment because the, the other baling job I took on... Um, I got 45 bales off the field. I only had to deliver 28 of them to fulfil the contract which means we gained another 17 silage bales. So we're up to 130 silage bales on hand now. So those baling contracts worked out brilliantly, I think. Well, the first one was 33, the second one was 17. So we got, yeah, we got 40 bales. That must be more than that, because we only had 80 originally. 50, we want to talk about <laughs> 33 and 17 is 50, not 40. Yeah, 50 bales we gained. So as well as being paid for doing... No, don't want those. As well as being paid for doing the contract... We, um, we've we got silage bales, which means, look, I keep saying we can use those for a multitude of different things. I can just sell the silage if I want to. I am still seriously considering going down the total mix ration route because it pays very well at the livestock market. Now, why am I taking the cultivator? I'm not taking on a cultivating job. I've made a decision. Now, this may come very quickly. Like I said, I'm trying to remember what I said earlier, as, I, as I've said a few times now. This is all being kind of done in fits and starts when I can fit it all in. Um, and I can't remember what I've said and what I haven't already, so apologies for that. And I only bought that little yard only an episode ago. But the time that's passed since then, we've gone through three days, which is, what's that, a month and a bit of work. So we've done a month and a bit of contracts and work and we've built our money up. My dad always said when I was growing up, <laughs> and it was when myself and my wife and it's just the crazy thing, as I've, I've mentioned already, tomorrow, Wednesday, 25th wedding anniversary. Amazing. But when we were looking to buy a house together, to get a place, before we'd even got married, so 25 years plus, um, we were going to rent a flat, we were going to get a flat. And my dad had always said, invest in bricks and mortar. You know, it's the best thing you can do, invest in bricks and mortar, son. Um, my wife's father um, said, don't rent you know you can get caught stuck in a spiral that kind of thing we were just desperate to move out we wanted to move you know we wanted to live together and he was right of course he was but that being impetuous and young and he was like no we just want to move you know so that being said the point of me saying that is we're going to invest in bricks and mortar we are going to buy the pig farm so we are buying Pineview farm uh, Paula and Gordon moved out a little while ago now, so it's been empty for a little while. Now, as I said, there is feed and stuff already here, so I've got an idea of what I want to do with that, where I'm going to go with it. But what I'm going to do now is buy this. I think it's just over 125 grand, if I recall correctly. Uh, where are we? Pineview Farm. Now, we still don't have a silo. Hang on. There we go, 125,099. Let's buy it. So we now own 
our own little farm which is great which means I can move my doorstep again so my doorstep will go I'm gonna probably put it over here by this little building because we don't actually have a farmhouse as such we have plenty of buildings we've got a big barn um, it does mean we could start investing in pigs if we want to we've got this um, we've got water point as well here which is great right down by the river it's a lovely location um, but as far as the animals go like I say because there's already feed in here and I kind of mentioned that earlier what I will do is if, if and when we do get pigs I will still get products and things for pig feed so all I would do is replace what's here in essence so any pig food that I gather for pig food whether it be the constituent parts or I buy just pig food I will buy it and then it will be absorbed if that makes sense so in essence I'm not just going to take this and say oh fantastic I haven't got any pig food I will still get pig food I will still make pig food and it will be kind of replacing what's here it will make sense as I go along it is, it's the only way I can think of doing it fairly without it seeming like I'm kind of cheating or anything like that I don't, I don't want we've got our own workshop as well that's fantastic I don't want it to be a kind of oh this is a bit of a Swiss now we do get a little field unfortunately it has withered so the reason for the cultivator I'm going to cultivate it now I could put a crop of my own in Do we own? that's a point actually the lane's right there is it? this is not going to take long Oh, it's just a low hedge down. I was thinking, do we own that over there? No, it's the other side of the lane, isn't it? Of course we don't own that. So what do I do? Do I lease a cedar and put some crop in? Actually, that's the point. I'm out, I'm out of the window, aren't I? L1, L1 and options. I can put oilseed radish, poplars or grass. <laughs> uh, we're out of the planting window for absolutely everything else. I just, I just didn't have the money until now to buy it. I could have, could have, could have, could have put soybeans or corn in it had we got enough money yesterday, but we just didn't. And I wouldn't have had time to plant it anyway. Never mind. Uh, so yeah, I'll, I'll bring all the equipment over. We'll see where we stand little walled section here now I, mm, I suppose I could grass it but it will still take a long time for that to grow but it probably wouldn't hurt or I could just leave it and then put a, a winter crop in it just thinking if we just managed to get some kind of mm, grass maybe but needless to say we're all right now when I woke up this morning it was about quarter to five and there was a baling contract available on field 56 which is right behind, behind our little yard by the pub and I thought straight away right let's get on that let's get another baling contract done because it means I have some more silage bales on hand so I borrowed all the equipment picked up the mowers picked up the um, wind rower drove down to the field started the machinery up lowered the, the mowers down and there was like a pop sound honestly literally a pop and I landed very unceremoniously on the grass all the machinery bonk, just vanished the contract disappeared off off of the available contracts list they could have just said we don't want it done I would have taken the stuff back it was very weird yeah so um, yeah, didn't happen there just disappeared on me I am considering this now as well now whether or not I think I'm just going to leave the silage bales where they are by the side of that field it would be pointless for me to bring them all down here and store them by the side of the field here to what end they're not doing any harm where they are they're wrapped so they don't need to be under cover although I do need to start making some hay um, I'm going to need hay I've been looking at 
I mean, this is the thing, is the, the finite resources I've got at the moment, and I'm doing a lot of jobs to get the money I, that I need. Um, if we look at, uh, scroll across until we get to contracts, where are we? What have we done so far? Missions completed 41. So we're already up to 41 contracts. Um, and like I say, that's, had, that's involved cultivating jobs, I've done some sewing jobs, I've done a load of fertilising jobs, I've done two baling contracts. Um, that was the whole point right from the outset was I was going to set myself up as a, a hired hand, somebody that would pick up jobs and with the idea being that if I could get to a point where I could own my own land and get my own farm set up I would. And this is the next step on that on that um, quest adventure. Um, so yeah, we're a few contracts in. Lost my thread where I was going with that, but oh yeah, the, the things I want to buy. I've got finite resources, so I thought investing in bricks and mortar was a, the best option at the moment. I may regret that. I do need to get a harvester and header. I said I do. I don't necessarily because during harvest season I can still borrow equipment and do contracts for other people. But again, if I've got my own harvester. I can then have all of the, fine, like the payment to me, rather than it being I lose some for borrowing equipment. So I'm looking at a harvester and header, and I think I may have found one fairly cheaply. I'm also looking at a lorry and trailer, again fairly cheaply, but both of those combined I don't have the finances to get. I just haven't got the money to get them yet. So I've just got to carry on. Keep on keeping on. There's nothing to stop me getting pigs as it stands, because like I say, I have got feed and stuff in there already that's been left behind. Um, I was going to go and sort out some fuel, get a fuel barrels out and bring fuel down to the farm here. But, you know, honestly, the petrol station's just up the road. It's not too much of a bother to go and get it. Um, at some point, I will get some and bring it over and store it. So I've got some here at the farm, but I really don't need to at the moment. And when I said there are a couple of contracts, I mean, like I say, there's a couple of cultivating ones still knocking about and a couple of fertilising ones. Um, and the thing with that being, yeah, there aren't that many. And they don't pay out that highly. I mean, I could knock a few of those off and it'd still work out five, six, maybe seven grand, I guess. Which is seven grand at the end of the day. You know, the fertiliser I'm buying is fairly cheap um, from Anne Marie up the road. Those cultivating jobs, if I did those, that would then open up sowing contracts on those fields. That's the reason they're still sitting there saying cultivating available because I haven't done them. Which would open up more fields to be available for contracts further down the line. But we are moving through the season and, and we are going to get to that point where we're, in, we're into harvesting. So in all honesty, once I've done this, like I have now, um, I'm kind of out of work to do. I really don't know what to do now. I can go and check on my bales, but they won't be fermented yet. I'm just trying to think, where can I store this? Probably, actually, what we do would be in... Um, Let's see if it needs any repair work doing. Can't get in there. No. Oh, there we go. Oh no, that's alright. A little bit. Nope, not enough to warrant repair. £17, just do a little bit of preventative maintenance. Ah, oh, that's something we do need to sort out. It's going to be a jet wash at some point. We don't have one. go under. I don't think it will. It's quite high, isn't it? Unless I drop it down, maybe? Actually, I'm probably better off putting it inside that building on. If I drop it down and kind of drag it back. So it might be too high at the moment. Yep. It's amazing, isn't it? Buying this plot of land, that barn alone is probably the same size as the yard I've got already. <laughs> Crazy, isn't it? Right, well, 
what we'll do is we'll whiz very quickly up the lane. Should have probably indicated and looked before just pulling out. Whiz up there quickly. I wonder if that's the farmhouse that's attached maybe. I suppose I could maybe put put the doormat outside there. I mean we have got a house up the lane here, I don't suppose my wife's gonna move, it's a nice house. But if the farmhouse comes with the farm. I suppose we could rent one out, couldn't we? Like a holiday let, something like that. So I suddenly thought, did I close the gate? I did. <laughs> but I'm going to come up here and the gate's going to be wide open. Now I have people saying, come on, what's the first rule? As I've said before, Starts with gates and then submarines sink. My old CO when I was at Air Cadets came out with that once. We were like, what is he talking about? Um, I'll explain in a second. So they're all the ones from the previous one. We end up with 98. But then we had 33 extra because we already had 8 of our own and I explained that already. This is the 17 from the last contract I've done so I've kept them separate. We've got a ton of size barrels sitting there. That's absolutely fantastic. Yeah, what he said was, we were at Cadets one evening, and it was cold outside, and someone had come and left the door open. And the whole comment was made, oh, you're born in a barn. And then he said, it's a slippery slope, that's how submarines sink. And we're like, what? <laughs> what is he talking about? <laughs> and he said, you get into the habit of leaving doors open, and then things get left open all over the place, and then you end up joining the Navy, becoming a submariner, and you <laughs> leave the hatch open. And then when the submarine goes underwater, it's like, what? It was the weirdest thing I've ever heard. It was kind of funny. But the funny thing is, that's always stuck in my head since then. It's, um, oh, bizarre. So, anyway, <laughs> that being said, just want to show you the bells. Um, we have got a load more. I'm going to go and move all our equipment to our new farm. Going to pick up my doormat and move my doormat over. Um, and I honestly don't know, I'm just thinking again, this may be a short episode because other than that, I just need to roll ahead into day four and see if anything else pops up. Um, I can have a down day, twiddle my thumbs, maybe. You know what I say? The devil makes work for idle hands, idle thumbs, idle fingers, I don't know. Um, I suppose I could cut down some more trees, couldn't I? I did say if I get any downtime, if I cut a few trees down and sort of buck them up, then they're ready to go um, for when lumber starts picking up in price again. I suppose it makes more sense doing the felling and stuff in nice weather <laughs> than it does wait until snow and rain and horrible weather in the autumn, maybe. As far as the weather goes, we're looking pretty good um, moving forward. The next couple of days looks quite nice. That's why I was thinking about hay making. So I'll take now, I'll take the front loader. And the trailer, I guess. Will let me pick that up. I need to lift it up out of the way. There we go. With the weight on the front, set the weight off. We'll come and get the mower, we'll grab the fertilizer trailer. And then we'll move the doormat. Excellent. It's now 10.06. 10.07. Um, I've moved everything over. I've also bought a jet wash. Where did I put it? Round here. We've got a jet wash. Lovely. Um, it's on the pallet. We can move that whenever we want to. That's fine. If I decide I don't want it there, I can put it somewhere else. That's not a problem. So everything's moved. What I have done, actually, I was going to check on the ground state. Uh, where are we? Soil composition. One fertilizing state. Doesn't say it needs ploughing. Let's uh, drop that down, turn that off. Nope, we're good. So I'm going to put some more fertilizer on that because I can, I've just cultivated so it will allow me. But I've taken on a job, um, just a little transport job, 
moving some stuff from Beechwood Fishery, which is pretty much opposite, or just just along the lane a little bit, up to the horse track. I didn't honestly realise how much I'd um, already recorded. I've just been doing some editing and realised I'm already up to about 47 minutes or something like that. So um, I'll go and deliver this stuff. Um, and uh, like I say, I'll keep a, a track. No. <laughs> keep a track on um, there we go on what we've got available job wise if nothing really pops up over the course of today um, there might be a contracting job maybe as it warms up a little bit I don't know if any crops will be ready to harvest if something does then in the next episode we'll jump straight on that if not it may be day four of midsummer I know I keep saying it's day three I mean of summer it's not day three of the entire kind of series of videos we are now on day seven, aren't we? No, seven. There were six days in the first one, weren't they? So we're on day nine, aren't we? Wow. Anyway, this is where I'm going to love you and leave you. I know it's been a long time coming, this episode. Um, and apologies again. I'm, I'm fitting stuff in as I can. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you're still enjoying it. If you are, if you have, give us a like. If you don't subscribe yet, please do. If you want to leave a comment, feel free, and if you want to share this video, then please be my guest. Whatever you should choose to do, thanks for watching.